Hi, uh, Dr. Steingraber. Uh, could you tell us, please, uh, about your experience in Punjest? Yes, so I went, I went to Punjest um, because this is the first um, uh, exploration for shale gas here in Romania, and I understand that um, people don't want it there, and they have um, concerns about the health and safety. And I'm a biologist who has spent two years uh, looking now at the environmental and health uh, harms of fracking, and so I went to share information with them and also to listen about what their concerns were. And I discovered that uh, the people are right to be worried. I saw um, the road that is the only road uh, in the area that is full of uh, horse carts and women carrying water from communal wells and children and cattle and pedestrians and bicyclists and along the same road now are driving very fast uh, trucks that uh, are Some servicing the, 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 the drill. Right. So I, I mean this is a, an immediate safety hazard. Um, I saw that the uh, many springs um, where uh, drinking water comes bubbling to the surface in many wells that are located right next to the side of the roads. So any sort of vibrations, um, any kind of um, contamination, um, these wells are very vulnerable. Even just from the vibrations of the trucks going back and forth um, next to these wells. Um, I was shown cracks in, inside people's homes. People's homes are built very traditionally. Yeah. Uh, made out of um, building material clay and straw and just the vibrations of the trucks alone um, and, the, and the rumbling. The noise is, is uh, irritating and incessant. This also has health effects. So as one woman told me, there is an end to silence in Punjas. There's no more silence. Just this uh, sound of the drilling, drilling, drilling 24 hours a day, seven, seven days a week. It's, uh, it's hard to relax in, in that situation. But I guess my main impression is that here we have um, the military police serving as a private security guard for an American company, right. right? And so it's not just the bedrock of this community that's being fractured; it's democracy itself. Because these people, uh, clearly, uh, I've met you know hundreds of people turned up to my talk. Um, they don't want this drill rig here. They'd um, been very uh, forceful in their opposition, uh, and yet they're being uh, occupied essentially by Chevron, and, and then by um, police that should be um, protecting the well-being of the Some citizenry guys. and instead are serving as security force uh, for an American company. And as an American, I felt um, ashamed of that and, and quite angry. Um, and when uh, people asked me to, after my presentation on the environmental health risk, asked me to walk with them um, down their main street, to, uh, yeah. uh, close to the drill rig, uh, immediately the gendarmes um, put fences up right over the public street. We weren't allowed to pass any further. And when um, people objected to this very, you know, uh, forcefully um, by actually attempting to remove the fencing across the street so they could walk freely in their own community, um, they were sprayed with something that caused um, uh, Pepper tears spray. and yeah. I don't know what something, it was. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Choking. I saw children who were choking. I saw old people weeping from the whatever this chemical was. Um, I re retreated with my 12-year-old, but we, too, the, you know, the rest of the evening felt sore throats and so forth. I, th I honestly don't know if that's because of the odors from the drill rig itself or from the whatever the spray, the spray, right. the spray yeah. was. But it was uh, shocking to me that um, that this is now the situation. Uh, I, I've, I've it seems to be a little bit out of control, isn't it? Or at least not out of control, but kind of a tense and... It's a, t it's a tense situation and it's not a democratic process, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so if, if fracking is so safe as the industry claims, why aren't, why they, would not, you do that? Why aren't yeah. they not sharing the information? Why aren't they not telling us what chemicals yeah. they're using? Why aren't they explaining where the water right. comes from? Why aren't they talking to people? Um, instead, it, the, the drill rig itself is hidden behind uh, razor wire and fencing, um, surrounded by very frightening looking police force that's permanently contained. I'm so the nearest I can see is that the if we, we want to talk about shale gas as, be, as providing um, jobs, the jobs that are being provided are, are, policing, <laughs> are policing jobs. And, and here were people who probably consume less fossil fuels than most Europeans and Americans, right? right? They, they, um, they have horses, um, they live in small homes, 
Um, they you don't, you don't, don't expect them to consume much energy. Not, yeah, and so here they are being asked to be the staging grounds for a massive industrial operation to provide the rest of the world with a fossil fuel at a time of climate crisis when we should be um, looking elsewhere rather than the bedrock for our, our sources of energy. And a water crisis as well. And a water crisis as well. And you know, when you are drawing your drinking water from a well that's uh, you know, as big around as this, it's very vulnerable to contamination. Um, and should their water be contaminated, there's no other source of water for these people. And what I was told again and again was that we just want to be left in peace. You know, we know how to grow our own food. They're very self sufficient and actually living in a very ecological way. Yes, they are. Yeah. And that's going to probably be destroyed very soon if they're going to proceed with uh, developing the whole fracking thing. I'm not convinced this is a, um, an inevitability, the fracking of Romania. I mean, we uh, in the United States are also told, oh, this, you know, the shale army has arrived, resistance is futile. You know, those are actual words used by the gas industry. And those of us who decided not so fast that we have not consented to this, um, have had some success, um, especially in New York where I live, we, where we now have a six-year moratorium and hope to turn it into right. a permanent ban. You know, we were told a couple of years ago we, we were foolish, that the only thing we could do is help them develop rules about how they're going to frack, but we couldn't say yes or no. But we simply decided to go back to fundamentals and, and say no. Um, and that's the message that I hope to bring um, to the people of Romania, that uh, all over the world people are standing up to say, you know, a form of energy that poisons people, that contaminates water, contributes to air pollution, and, and, and takes water out of the global water cycle, ruins it forever, at a time when we desperately need it, and at a time when we should be um, looking toward renewables, uh, is, a, is a terrible choice. And, and it's not a choice that we need to make. We can undo it. And as long not as we're a choice for the future. It's not a future choice. It takes us backwards to a terrible path instead of forward to a future. And I, th and I felt like the people were very informed about that. And yes, uh, they seem, yeah, they seem to be pretty informed. I think, uh, you know, there have been incidents in the past, uh, actually much more violent than this. Hopefully, they're going to cease at some point. Uh, any message to the Romanian authorities of any sort? Well, I, I mean, it's shameful what's happening in, Puja, in Punjast, and uh, the people there deserve um, a much better situation. Um, and the idea that their own democratic process is fractured, that they're no longer in charge of their own um, economic development is not um, a way we want to live in the, in the 21st century. And it's, you know, I want to say to, to uh, Romanian elected officials as well that um, the, the use of our land as the factory floor for the fossil fuel industry in the name of so-called energy security um, really needs close examination. And if you're an elected official, it's your job to protect people and to look out for their well-being and their security. And a form of energy that only allows us a few more years of fossil fuel um, and brings maybe temporary profits to a few, but risks permanent ruin, permanent ruin of water um, and agriculture um, is, is something that um, we need to look at very closely. Um, and elected officials have a special responsibility to make a wise decision here. So uh, those of us who have been studying the environmental health effects um, feel like those of, that we in the scientific community also have an obligation to offer elected officials um, the best science available. So that's what I came with. I began in Brussels when I laid out the environmental and health effects uh, during um, an environmental summit at Green Week in the European Commission. Um, and then my next step was here in Punjab because I felt that the people who are suffering the most um, need the information. On the front line. Right. On the front lines. Well, Dr. Steingraber, thank you very much for coming to Romania and actually helping us with your valuable information. And all the best. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you.